In one of my previous videos, I have mentioned that there are operators that do not commute. This means that the expression of their product depends on the order in which you multiply them. This blunt statement alone is not enough for a theoretical physicist we'd like to quantify. This can be done using the commutator, which is usually written using square brackets and is defined as the difference of the two ways to multiply the two objects. Two operators commute if and only if this object vanishes. Note that switching the arguments of the commutator just introduces a minus sign. How do you calculate a commutator? A and B are operators, so they only exist to act on wave functions. To make a meaningful statement, we therefore need to imagine a wave function to the right of the expression. This function is never specified, it merely exists to be acted upon. Let's, as an example, calculate the famous commutation relation between position and momentum. In the beginning, it's just plugging in definitions, where I used the shorthand notation for the derivative. The key point is that one of the terms you end up with now features the derivative of x times psi, both of which are x-dependent, so a product rule is needed. This gives us two new terms, one of which cancels out the first one, so that we are left with i h bar psi. Because we never specified the wave function, we can now generally state that the commutator between position and momentum gives i h bar. This is another fundamental difference between classical and quantum mechanics. In classical mechanics, the momentum was just a number, not a derivative, and hence had no effect on the position. If you have a suitable basis for your system, you can alternatively also calculate commutators using matrices. This makes the calculation a bit nicer, but you should keep in mind that the results you find are in general only valid on the space spanned by your basis. It might not be as fundamental as it seems at first glance. Of course, there are operators that commute. Take position and energy, for example. The latter is represented by the Hamiltonian, or, according to the Schrödinger equation, by i h bar and the derivative with respect to time. The interpretation here is that the operators do not affect one another. If this is the case, and if the operators correspond to measurable quantities, then a result from linear algebra tells us that there is a common eigenbasis for both. This means that every vector in the basis is an eigenvector to both operators. Let's prove this under the assumption that all eigenvalues of b are different. It is also possible to prove this for degenerate eigenstates, but it's a bit more complicated. Define the auxiliary function a b as a acting on the eigenvector b of b. Acting with b on a b and using that a and b commute, we see that a b is an eigenvector of b to the eigenvalue lower b. Because we assumed the eigenvalues to be different, it follows that a acting on b gives us something proportional to b. This is precisely the definition that b is an eigenvector to a. If you think back some videos, you can conclude that if a and b commute, then both can be measured at the same time with a single measurement. For non-commuting operators, this is in general impossible. But more on that in another video. Until then, enjoy life if you can and don't be ashamed if you can't.